In this video, we're going to discuss the code switch behavior. So here I've set up a little scenario. I'm just going to stumble my way down the street. And here's a trash can, but what's this? Take a look at this document. 862. Huh. wonder what that does. I'm just going to go over here and find out. Let's see here. It was eight, nine, two. Oh, that is not correct. Oh no, it was a six. That's what it was. Oh, what was that? Oh, hey, an open door. Wow. This is pretty cool. I like it. Uh oh. Yeah, looks like I'm going to be here for a while. Let's have a look around. This is nice. Got a place to sleep. Oh, definitely going to have to remember this place for later. What in the world is this? This must be where you order up room service. Uh-oh. Oh, man, what's happening? I feel weird, guys. I'm going to stop it here. <laughs> okay. That's enough playing around. Uh, so code switch behavior. Obviously, this is a little, huge elaborate setup just to show you the code switch behavior, which I've incorporated here on this uh, key panel. You can use really whatever you want. So we have some prompt text like usual where it says, you know, to enter the code. Right. So obviously it's to, you know, press the keys to enter the code. The use range, like always, it's just how far away can you be from this object and still be able to interact with it. The switch code is the, the number that has to be entered in order for the switch to activate. The readout, X and Y, that's going to be where do, do the numbers appear on the screen when you're punching in the code. Uh, the usage text, that just gave us our, you know, uh, prompt for what buttons I use in order to select a digit, in order to change a digit, in order to submit the code. Uh, the incorrect text is what displayed when I entered the code incorrectly. Uh, and then the, the correct text code or text is the text that displays when I entered the code correctly. The status uh, currently is locked and that's what we want it to be. And so by entering the code, we make it unlocked. Uh, we could obviously do it the other way around. You could lock the uh, item up. Maybe you've got a gun safe or something like that. I don't know. The fail alarm, I chose to uh, not have a fail alarm sound involved in this one just because I think alarm sounds can be a little obnoxious. Uh, but I could put in a fail alarm and that way if I entered the code incorrectly three times uh, then on the fourth attempt it would sound the alarm and that could trigger... Uh, other, you know, NPCs, enemies to come around. So that's what the alarm range is for, is if I had enemy NPCs in the area and they hear the alarm within that range, then they'll come and investigate. I don't have any NPCs in this scene, so it didn't make any sense to set that part up. Um, and then lastly, we have four different sound slots in this one. So the first one corresponds with the sound you hear when I enter a number. The second sound um, has to do with the confirmation. So when I got the number correct and I submitted that, then I heard the correct uh, chime. Uh, the sound two is the sound you hear if you get it incorrect. We saw that when I entered the wrong number. And then lastly, uh, the last sound is the alarm sound, which again, wasn't really relevant in this case. So it's basically just a very fancy switch. And we can see that when I reverse out here a little bit, we can see that there's a logic link set up to this panel. Um, and uh, that panel is just a, a rotating door. Um, so the door rotated and allowed me to come in. Uh, once I was in through the door, I have a zone here that's set up to basically trigger the the um, door to close behind me after a few seconds. So that's how that closed. 
And then the rest of it was just for fun, just messing around. So hopefully that uh, is everything you ever wanted to know about the code switch behavior. I think it's a really neat one, and I think it could be used in a lot of different ways. I was just playing around with this particular scenario, but I think you guys can come up with much, much more creative uses than I can. If you like the video, please click all the buttons down below that you see. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.